Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome to a new live stream. What date is it? It is November the 13th. Lucky 13. Oh, nice. I like that. Welcome to, we get a look at a new synthesizer. You know that always makes Skippy happy. <laughs> This is from our friends and family at Mock. Hello, everybody. Look at all everybody showing up already. Good. Good to see. Oh, Kasaka from Japan. Domo arigatou gozaimashita. Otsukari sama desu ka. Domo. Ah. Yes, Skippy's never boring. So, what synthesizer is this making these unbelievable barren, dunescape, resonant, beautiful sounds. It is mini rays. What would happen if a mini Moog and wave razor met at a bar? <laughs> mini rays would happen, <laughs> right? What do you think, Taiho? Is that an accurate description? <laughs> I, I am still trying to get over the, the picture in my mind. <laughs> and what drinks would they have? Hmm. Oh my gosh. So this is a, let's just say a more palatable version of Wave Razor. It isn't each oscillator with 16 segments. It's each oscillator with three it's laid out in a format with, you know, your oscillators and your mixer and your filter up here and your envelopes down here, kind of like the mini Moog interface layout. But it's Wave Razor, man. The oscillators are all slicing oscillators that can do all sorts of really cool things. Now, I'm playing a bonus patch that I made for the unified version. We unified all 337 factory patches. We put category tags so you can quickly find them and go, I need a synth, and here's all the synths together. Um, this is something I believe that they're gonna be adding to Mini Rays in the future. They haven't added it for their first release. So if that's you wanna- true, yeah. How was that? It's I'm sorry, that's, that's true, yeah. We're yeah. going to be working on the browser. Right, so the unified version, um, we went through and we categorized everything. So you can find everybody. You want basses? They're all up here, all together. So you can go, give me some basses, all the arps, everything. So. And since it's Unify, all you have to do is right click on the other bass and say, load into Unify as a new layer. And I'm playing those two basses. Together. So that's the power of Unify. I could say, oh, I want this bass added, and now we got three uh, mini raised basses. So you can stack them and do all sorts of fun things. Really cool. <clears throat> I think we'll That's look at the interface maybe a little bit with Taiho, um, and then we'll we'll dive in a little bit more. Maybe make a patch from scratch after the interview. But let me bring on a special guest. Check out who's here. Taiho, welcome! Yay! Hi, everybody. Welcome. Man, How are you doing? Uh, Skippy, that does Unify just makes everything sound so awesome. <laughs> I can't believe how how big that sounded. Yeah, it's. A... Well, once you layer a couple of these sounds and hear them in, it's like this organic. You know, it's and then you start adding another synthesizer to it if you want to make it have a little bit different. I mean. That's the joy. That's the joy. Yeah, That's why we love it. It's a fun That's thing. The, so. That is. That's the beauty of Unify. It's it's um it's pretty amazing. Uh, I hope everybody has a chance to to check it out because Unify yes. is is magic. It's one of those those magic plugins. Oh, Domo, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. Or, so how are you yeah. doing? Wave Razor, first week. Yeah. No, um, mini raise. Mini raise. Mini like raise. Wave yeah. Razor uh, like, um, yeah, I'm really tired, but, <laughs> but <laughs> happy that, yes. that we've released it. And, and, you know, we're not done. We're still, you know, working yeah. uh, on it. We, uh, we launched with version 1.0. We've already got a 1.01 out. Right. And uh, there's a few more things that we want to address. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with this release and uh, with all the incredible work that uh, all, you know, the sound designers did for the Bob Moog Foundation Bank, you included. Right. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. Yeah, everybody's we talk about work was just spectacular and uh, I'm so happy with it. Good. It came out so nice. It's got such a unique personality and it's accessible. What I like, I tried my best to, you know, wrap my head around making complete <laughs> patches with Wave Razor and never got quite deep enough <laughs> to, to really like feel like releasing something with it. Uh, but with this, you know, it's a lot more in front of you and you know what you have to work with. Whereas with Wave Razor, it's just kind of like this endless pool of options and you just kind of don't even know what all your options are sometimes you know it is true like uh you do have to get used to it yeah it's a like wave razor is more like uh you know having a really large euro rack modular um right. there's a there's so many options there uh, you can yeah. you know call up up to 128 modulation sources right so you could have you know 128 LFOs or envelopes or step generators or you know combinations of all of that stuff and then uh every oscillator has 16 slices and each you know wave slice is essentially another oscillator right um and it's then <laughs> uh there are three filters right but you can fill each filter block with um a bank of eight filters so then there's 24 filters that you can have Right, and then uh, there are three effects buses with sixteen effects each, so that's forty-eight effects, and then those can be modulated from the synthesizer. So if you max everything out, you can have up to, actually, it's not up to; it's like over twelve thousand parameters in a single patch. Holy cow! Um, nobody would do that. You'd be like the craziest <laughs> sound, and you right. know your computer might blow up. But uh, it's um it's there and and you know that amount of uh power um you know requires attention like you yes. know it doesn't you can't just you know um uh, patch a, a giant euro rack modular in five minutes and then you know expect something to you know come out that you're right. happy with it right. it does take a lot of time yeah so uh it's it's for that kind of person if you want to sound design and wave razor, it's uh, you know it's it's a heavily sort of right um, deep dive twe tweak oriented machine. Right. But then like next to it, we have mini rays, which is if you know if your wave razor is that giant euro rack modular, mini rays is more like you know a, a mini Moog Voyager next to that. Right. Uh, and um, you know we were so heavily inspired by the mini Moog Model D's user interface, which. I, I still feel like it's the, the best balance between um, ease of use because it's, you know, it's really simple and quick yeah. and um, sort of timbral variety because there's, there's surprising amount of timbre that you can get out of that thing. Right. Um, so, you know, that was the start. That was the inspiration for right. the top panel. And uh, and then you know, add we, the capabilities of, of the oscillator, your slicing oscillator to that. And um, yes, yes, but still kept it relatively simple. So mm -hmm. there's there's two slices per oscillator. Yeah. And um, and then the <clears> razor, <throat> which also has a frequency. It's the razor slices the two oscillators together. I'm and showing the, I'm showing the interface. Those... Let me point this out really quick, guys. So as you can see, there's oscillator one, two, and three. Here's your on and off for each of the oscillators. You can turn on and off. And then on the left side is one slice, and you have all of these waveforms to choose from. All these different exponential, logarithmic, um, random noises, which are really interesting. And then on the other side is another list of those oscillators, and then you can modulate 
the tuning of each of these slices, which does like some cool harmonic syncing things. You can choose whether you want it to do octaves, semitones, or do the full spectrum as far as to how it works. But each side of this oscillator waveform is able to be modulated in cool ways. And so you can, but just over here's your LFO. Each LFO that you click, your matrix changes. You have eight assignable targets for the LFO. Over here's your envelopes, and you can see you have an envelope matrix with four assignable targets per each of the four LFOs. And A is the amp, so everybody goes through the amp for the volume of the overall sound. The layout is, is very, one unique thing that's different than the Moog, although it's more like the Moog Voyager, is you do have two oscillate, two, or sorry, two filters, and you have other things beyond just filtering. You have fold, decimator, saturator, compressor, which can do some really cool harmonic uh, shifting. Down here is ring math. Um, do you want to explain ring math for everybody? It's another harmonic place to play because you have all of these kind of, I think it is kind of in a similar way to what you have with serum and stuff, right? Between the oscillator interacting with other oscillators. It is like that. So oscillators two and three feed the ring math module. And um, like ring mod uh, is one of the choices. And right. ring mod is a multiplication between both of those waveforms. Right. And, but there's, more math operations that you can do. You can, you know, add and subtract, and then you can even do like um, logic functions to those waves. So right. there are 20 different selections in there uh, that are, you know, those different functions plus um, combinations of things. Right. And um, I'm not the best guy to explain <laughs> them because I was terrible at math, but. <laughs> Me uh, too. Rob came up with some really awesome sounding things in in Wave Razor. There's actually, I believe, forty selections, um, oh, and we simplified that list. We chose some of our, <clears throat> you know, our most favorite ones out of there. Right. Still ended up with over twenty, um, right. and they all sound different. Have different strange results when you feed them <laughs> with, with those two oscillators, right. and you know the the frequency relationships. Um, you know, make a difference, right? If you're tuning them, uh, the oscillators away from each other rather than having them both on the same note, that's when like the intermodulations start becoming really interesting. Huh. Yeah, you get into combining things and you never know what you're going to get out of it, right? Yeah. And then plus, like, you know, having a wave razor oscillator, which is already doing some crazy stuff underneath it, and then having them, you know, intermodulate with each other, you can get pretty insane very quickly <laughs> so wow. uh yeah i mean that's that's sort of the thing that i found out with wave razor itself um you know we put in those 16 slices and if you have all those 16 slices active and doing different things you can get a, a overly thick sound in just a single oscillator right so um we did sort of reduce it when we did our, our Eurorack module. We, we um, pared it down to eight. And, you know, we found that that amount of slices was still a lot, but um, really fit with the Eurorack sort of, um, you know, uh, 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 world. Right. Um, there's, you know, 20 modulation points on that Eurorack module, and um, you can get a lot of really interesting movement happening with an eight slice oscillator. But it's still, you know, really complex, and it's in that giant Eurorack modular, maybe that, right. that we were talking about. Right. Uh, but um, Mini Rays was focused on being, you know, super fast. So, like, right. uh, with so two cool. slices per. Um, Per oscillator that you know that's the sort of minimum that you can have uh right, right. And still slice things together right um because otherwise it would just be you know just one waveform and it doesn't right. matter where you slice it because right. it's all the same right right uh but um and that's another point to talk about actually is like um you know if you have both of the same wave and both sides um the razor is not really going to make uh, much difference because it's all just sort of slicing the same wave. But as soon as you start moving those waveforms away from each other, like different shapes, right. different tunings, 
right. um, you start getting these really crazy intermodulations happening. You could use the same uh, waveform and just change tuning and you'd still get some right. harmonic stuff because half of the, you take, take a waveform and <clears throat> divide it in the middle and the left side's doing something different than the right side. That's, you'll hear it. Yeah. yeah, and you can see it in the graphic. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, here, let me play some patches. We're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna point out real quickly, right here is the uh, preset list. Now they have, let me go to the website and show you where that is. That's right here, mok.com, media overkill, mock. <laughs> and <laughs> if you go to products, I mean, they have things on the front page right now, but mini raise is available. I also want to point out, like Taiho mentioned, the Bob Moog Foundation Sound Bank. Um, Eric Persing did this with Spectrosonics. Yeah. Created a library for Omnisphere that you can buy. And 100% of the proceeds go to the Bob Moog Foundation, which is creating um, a museum in Nashville, or Asheville, right? And, Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. yeah, North Carolina, where Bob Moog's home is, where he grew up and where he, his company was. Um, I was one of the contributors, all these other people that we see some pretty cool names of other programmer types that have been around for a while. Uh, my friend, Casey Baldwin, who made the library for Spire that we sell here at the website, that was just insane. Um, yeah. Jerry Kowarski, I worked with at Korg. Um, Amin Batio did the demo song for the Omniverse 2 library that I've released. Like, God, that was like, 12 years ago, 10 years ago. Um, amazing composer and programmer. He did amazing uh, Interstellar Suite with the, the, the Moogs doing like a complete orchestra. It's amazing what he has done. Mark Mothersbaugh, of course. Michael Boddicker, a friend of mine from Los Angeles. It's been on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of records. Some really good people. Great patches. You get to these inside of Wave Razor by going over here and um, once you buy the Bob Moog Foundation and put in your license, you'll notice if you bu just buy a uh, mini raise by itself, factory is here and then the BMF is grayed out and you click it, it doesn't do anything. Once you have the license, it opens up, I believe there's about 200 patches, Taiho? Yeah, it's over 200 patches. Over 200 patches. Currently you don't know who made what. Um, that's one of the things that they'll be updating um, tags so you'll be able to know the programmers and people but yeah there's just really really cool patches mark mothers box boss x xp005 <laughs> It actually, if you hold it down, it starts doing these with a weird sort of polyrhythm things. Eventually, it's an insane patch, and uh, modulations are pretty crazy too. Wow. <laughs> It's very Mark. <laughs> it's very Mark. Um, so there's so many patches. Now the mini mode was monophonic. What's cool with this is polyphonic. Industrial groove. All sorts of great stuff to play. I, I found my volume prop. My volume was down here, guys, at 5.7, minus 5, minus 5. So I'm going to turn it up. So everybody turn down your audio. Turn it down your system because I was able to get more volume so we're louder. Somebody in the chat was like, does it seem kind of soft? I found out why. <laughs> so sorry about that. So, so many patches. And as you call it up, you see everything change in front of you for the interface. I'll point out down here in the right, there's an effect, and you can choose from here uh, two types of delay, chorus, flanger, phaser, reverb, wave folder, saturator, and decimator. Reverb is really nice. Oh, 
the other things do really cool harmonic shifting and uh, modulation things and and again we've unified this if you own unify and you have many rays um, the the link for the file is in the video description it's also available already at the website I updated the page last night at three in the morning because that's what we do <laughs> <laughs> That is what we do. Yeah. That is what we do. It's like sleep isn't an option when you own a website. Oh it's, my gosh, no. It's not an option. Uh, but so if you, the proceeds for this Bob Moog Foundation Bank, 100% go to the Moog Foundation. They're all about educating people about synthesis and keeping the, the, the history of Bob Moog aware to, because I mean, he's the pioneer that started all this adventure that we're on. So. Yeah, if it wasn't for him, I, you know, who right. knows what we'd be doing. Who knows what we'd be doing, yeah. Yeah, it would not be this, probably. Or it would be in some, we'd be, it'd be anyway, we won't even think about that. Cause that <laughs> I just watched The Matrix last night, so I'm all about, like, oh, what, you know, are, are we awake? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> alternate is, reality. Is this our reality <laughs> type of thing? <laughs> Crazy stuff. Uh, so, um, anyway, let's see. Um so I'm just checking the the, uh, the description, the chat real quick, make sure everything's good. Yes, Mark Mothersbaugh also computed, contributed music to Pee-wee's Playhouse. Yes, he did. Um, let's see here. Somebody has a stuck note problem. Um, yeah, I, I, I've seen a little bit of that, uh, particularly if you're um, using the arpeggiator and then um, changing patches. Yeah. Uh, um, we've we've noticed that we've I've logged that bug and and Rob is going to take a look at it. Um, if you run into that, there's um there's a little uh, exclamation point icon up there. That's right. our all notes off um, sort of panic button. Right. Uh, Definitely. You know, I, that right seems here. to clear it up for me. So. Um, yeah. It, uh, it it's right above the patches, the fourth uh, icon, you see a little exclamation point. That's a note off, you know, stop DSP if you have stuck notes. Yeah, so, oh. so um, yeah, I apologize for you having to use that, but oh. um, yeah, that's probably the thing to do. And then we're definitely looking at it. Right. Uh, do you have a favorite patch? Like one that you love that I should play? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh... You know, I mean, Batia did this um, patch called Transporter. Yeah. That sounds like a Star Trek transporter. And, you know, I'm such a geek that like, <laughs> when I ran across that, I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. Here we go. Uh, transporter. And then use the mod wheel. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> So good. You just need the whoosh out yeah, of that, yeah. and you've, you've got well, your that's... transporter effect for Star Trek. <laughs> that's fun. Oh, here's used to know. Nice and moody TV series brass. Very nice. You got to have some brass with the mode because it does brass very well. Here's guitar cue bass. Yeah, it really has a really unique signature sound to it. So well done. Well done. It's nice to have something fun to play with that. <laughs> That transports you to another world. Transports you to another <laughs> world. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Let's see, does anybody in chat have any questions for Taiho? Uh, let's see what's happening. Let's keep on top of this. Um, uh, Jeff Kellum says, congratulations on the latest Mini, Re Mini Rays release. Thank you, and hi, Jeff. Yeah. Cool. If you guys have any questions, pop them up. Um, you know, people are talking about yeah we've got hints coming from cherry audio releasing something in a in about 
10 days or so. And yes, yeah. it will be unified. We already know what it is, but we can't tell you. But um, that's that's in the works as we speak. So yeah, good things are happening there. Everybody's yeah. always bringing out something new, but we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> I don't know. Those, those guys are cherry. They're doing really great stuff. Yeah. Uh, I wish I knew some of them. I don't know anybody over there. Yeah. Um, I could get you in touch with them if you want to say hello to them. They're, they're really nice guys and really into like trying to nail the vintage. But, you know, they're, it's cool. They're finding some like places to like enhance. It's like, in, in a way, what Mini Rays does because it's kind of like the Mini Moog layout, but each, each area has, let's look at Mini Rays' interface. The oscillators are seriously updated from what you could do with the Moog. Um, You've got, by the way, for noise, I love this. Look at all the colors of noise you have. White, pink, turquoise, brown, black, black noise. Let's hear black noise really quick. Let's see. I got to go to the init patch, which is over here, factory, down towards the bottom, init. And then let's turn off the oscillators and turn on our black noise. I want to hear black noise. Ooh. It's got a static to it. Here's green noise. Blue. Which we can filter. Here's your filter if you guys are curious. Yeah, it's full spectrum. So you have all these different colors, violet. As you notice, they interact with the filter differently. There's certain frequencies missing. Also, cool thing to point out is if you just turn on oscillator one and turn off the noise, there's FM on the filter. So it can add some added beef even if the filter is low. Lots of stuff. We'll do a we'll we'll do a little bit of preset exploring in a little bit. Let's see if I have any other questions from our friends that are watching. Um, uh, that the filter you can you can drive it uh, in differently. Yeah. So like you can you can definitely overload it, particularly if you've um, you know cranked up the resonance, and then you just sort of need to back off the input of it, um, and then having the resonance cranked up and then doing the FM is, it starts giving you that um, more sort of, uh, you know, exponential FM kind of feel. Right. Um, particularly what if you're sweeping the filter. Right. Um, so bringing the input down just the oscillator level. Right. Yeah. Oscillator noise levels. Um, because if, if you've, if you've cranked the oscillators, you start saturating the filter. Right. Uh, so, so there's without FM, as you add the, oh, I should put this on the interface. Sorry, Taiho, I'm covering up your face to show us FM. <laughs> That's all right. Ah, that's really nice. Ah. So the input level of the oscillators going into the filter are gonna affect You can hear the chatter now. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. There are some patches that take advantage of that. Uh, and then, you know, we, we turn them way down on the output volume. Right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's there's some different colors that you can get out of there. Yeah. So much to explore. Um, congratulations on the release. It's been very fun to be a part of it. Um, and play with it. So, uh, yay to you. Does yeah. Mini Rays work well with a hardware MIDI controller? Uh, I, so, yeah, I was just talking about that. <clears throat> um, on, uh, we have some people asking about MPE and uh, MIDI right. Learn on uh, KVR. 
Right. And we we have been um, you know we've been looking at this for such a long time, and we know what we need to do. It's just that you know we're like a you know three person company, and we have this gigantic right. to do list. Um, right. But um, so right now we rely a lot on your host software. Um, right. to get MIDI in and out of, of many rays. So if you've got um, assignable modulation lanes, like, um, right. you know, our, our buddies at Traction do this, where, uh, you know, you can MIDI learn an automation lane, mm. and then it, it goes, you know, directly to many rays and everything is good. But like, you know, we realize that DAWs have different capabilities or, you know, hosts have different capabilities. Right. Um, I'm sure Unify has got it covered. Yes. Um, yeah. If you but, guys want to see, uh, let me call this up real quick. If you go to the the control knobs and you go here and you add a, a target and you go into mini rays, you will see all of the parameters are there for even the envelope three modulation amounts and levels. Um, the filter cutoff for both filter one, filter two are here. Each of the oscillators, all of those parameters are available. Um, in the unified version of this, we've done such things as we could take a base. I'm going to have Unify call up a patch real quick. Got to wake up the hard drive because it kind of went to sleep. Ah, these old computers, I'll tell you. <laughs> as you can see, we got filter. We got resonance. Tuning for each of the oscillators. Got the effects inside of mini rays. So whatever the effect is, you have wet dry mix as well as an auxiliary channel. So you can always CAD add this massive. Then the second page, I have assigned envelope one and envelope two ADSRs. So you can So you can modify the shape real quickly, and then on page three, there's a pump house. So you can get a cool pumping effect going. And that's for every patch. So anytime you call up a patch, before you even open mini rays, you can, you can get to the filter cutoff. Certain parameters. So they are all available to work with. So it's, it's fun to have access to them. The way Unify works is if something is able to be an automatable parameter, um, it shows up in the list for that plugin right here. These are the same hooks that your DAW used for automation. We, we can see that list and you can assign as many of these as you want to a single knob in Unify to change in any range you want. So it gets pretty, pretty carried away really quickly. But yeah, it's all there. So you can automate that way, but you don't have a MIDI learn in the interface yet. That's, that's true. To... Yeah. So that's, that's sort of the next step. Uh, you know, we, we yeah. know that people like the MIDI learn and the, the directness of it. Right. And so, you know, we'd like to address that. Right. Um, but right. for right now, we, we have to do it through the automation lanes. Right. Yeah. If you right click anything, um, it just flashes. Yeah. So, but it's software. And the nice thing with software is it's infinitely updatable. <laughs> Both that a, is true. A blessing and a curse, you know. It is. Yes, it is. It is both. Yeah. yeah. I've I've sat in Korg voicing meetings, many many years ago. I wouldn't even talk about what models it was because I don't want to talk about that because I don't want to shed light. It's bad. But with hardware, we had the engineers come in one day and say, "We're sorry, we weren't able to get this into our filter. The next synthesizer will have it," mm, <laughs> because yeah. you can't update hardware. It's once it's done and they've sealed and signed off on it, it's done until the next synthesizer. Um, that was true for a long time, but then uh, you started being able to update certain things. Right. right. Um, and then the game kind of changed there as well. Yeah. yeah if you, but, well, with the newer software where they have, you know, a USB input on the, this is back in the days of T series and O1Ws and stuff like that. So. Yeah, and, and I was making hardware back then too. So, yes, you were. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I saw the change happen. Yeah, uh, and it was weird. <laughs> it was weird. It was welcome and weird at the same time. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, so those of you 
that don't know the history, Taiho's been around as long as I have, pretty much. We, we were friends. I was working with him on Elisa's products, what, like 15, 20 years ago in Los Angeles. And did, yeah. Did we actually work on stuff together? Or, yeah. Or, uh... DM Pro. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked on that some um, with Mike Peak. Mm -hmm. um, I remember you, um, maybe you were just really busy doing Korg stuff all the time, but I, I always wanted to work with you more. And yeah. uh, I was, you know, I was really glad. It's been a, it's been a while and it was glad that you were able to, you know, do some sounds for the BMF thing too. It's, yes. it's nice to, always nice to work with you, Skippy. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. No, it's fun. It's fun to be a part. And I believe strongly I on the BMF Foundation. So anything I can do to help Michelle and her adventure of trying to... She, she is so dedicated. I just, you know, my gosh. Yeah, she's amazing too. It's inspiring. She's, she's a wonderful person. Yep. Okay, well, thank you for joining. Um, I'm looking to see if there's any last minute questions here. People are talking about... All sorts of, uh, it's interesting. Sometimes they'll get into their own discussions on all sorts of non-related things to what's <laughs> happening in video. Sure. That's how the community works, but it's, it's all fun. That's okay. fine. What's going on in the world today? I know, right? Yeah. I have no idea. I've just been like doing mini race stuff. I know, right? Yeah, you you got your nose to the grindstone and, and uh, everything else is just kind of a blur. I know. Yeah. yeah. It's good stuff. <laughs> Well, thank you for being here. For those of you interested, oh, um, mock.com is the place to go for mini rays. Good stuff. Cool, my friend. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Skippy. Yeah, it's, you're welcome. It's always a pleasure. And, and uh, you know, we really appreciate you helping us um, get Anytime. the word out about mini rays. Anytime. Uh, We're here for you. All right. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, okay. man. All right. Take care. You Bye. too. Bye. That was fun. Nice person. Such a nice guy. Worked with him on a handful of things now. And always enjoy Taiho. He's a great spirit. So, and he has a great synthesizer. Mini Rays has, it's still 1.0. I just want to be really clear. It's got some things that they are going to be fixing in software, um, but it sounds great. And the, the, the nice thing with software is it's infinitely fixable and updatable. So, any issues there might be with certain parts of performance or stuff, that's all fixable and will be fixed. But the thing that's cool is how cool it sounds. Now, about the Unified Library, this is the Unified Factory Patches. I showed you guys how we can get in here to um, the BMF Library. This is grayed out. It only becomes active and available to you once you have gotten a license from mock.com. Um, great, great sounds. Um, but we did not unify the Bob Moog Foundation Bank because those are protected patches. So <laughs> I could make a unified library of all those patches, but then, no, we don't want to do it. So please support. Don't, somebody might buy it and save them out. Don't do it that way. If you want to use those sounds, get a license. It's not that much money. And that is 100% applied to uh, the Mo Bob Moog Foundation and everything that they're doing. Let's look at the interface for a little bit and play with this. So as, as I pointed out, here's your filters. There's a saturator. And as you can see, when you choose a saturator, these four knobs actually change their name to be assigned something else. Um, I will point out when you go to the macro knobs inside of Unify and you go to uh, a list for the targets for mini rays, when you get to the filter, you, do, you don't see filter cutoff. It doesn't say filter cutoff. It says filter control one, two, three, four for filter one and one, two, three, four for filter two. They do that because that this assignment can, these four parameters can be different. If I set this to the decimator, now we've got um, sample rate, crush, 
uh, BAM and key track. And key track. So they're different depending on what type of a filter preset you call up. Here's your high pass filter. Now, if I wanted to be varying that parameter like that, that would be an LFO. So I could say down low, and then let's go over to here, LFO 2. And all I have to do is go to this list, and this is, as you can see, inside of Mini Rays, it's smart. So it's able to see the, the different parameters. If I was to change this to be back to the, the sample rate, uh, uh, what is it called, um, the decimator, um, then this list of targets inside of Mini Rays would change. So we're gonna go filter cutoff and just bring up the intensity. Let's do this, I wanna go speed. I want it to be timing wise, I want it to be tempo and I want it to be like a maybe a half note. Let's go half note. And the trigger, I want it to be legato. There. And if I don't want it to be bipolar, just want to. Now it's doing what I wanted it to do. And a tempo sync so I could load up drums and stuff like that. So it's fun to program. Its interface is fairly familiar, but everything has been exploded to have even more parameters. There's a separate matrix of four different modulation sources down here, which can be to the mod. Here's your list of controls here that you can work with. Um, key velocity tracking. Um, they do have, if you hit the parameter button here, you do have different themes. I like starlight. I like this, it's pretty cool. For being even more stark for reading it. Um, it has an arpeggiator, which is on right now. As you can see, you have a list of parameters up to one 30 second note. They have them listed as whole, half, quarter, eighths. Here's the 16th note random. We have glide down here. So fun to play with. Uh, reverb, we could change this to be a ping pong. Let's have it set to tempo. Very cool, fun to play with. Let's have this assigned to the filter cutoff for the envelope. So it's very fun to play with. Highly recommended for you that love synthesis and love the idea of what if a mini Moog went into a bar with Wave Razor. <laughs> this is what you get. Um, at the end of the list of all of the factory patches, there are six bonus patches that I made. Uh, here's Nuclear Earwax. That's hitting really hard, so let me turn this down just a bit. Um, we'll play random superhero in a minute. Here's Skylab Genesis, a lead, which has the mod wheel. Right? Um, here's Metallic Snow Cone. These are exclusive only to the Unified Patch Bank. You have to have mini rays and this library to get to these patches in Unify. Um, Replicants, I played at the beginning. Coolest patch I've made for 
this, I think. Very cinematic, soundtrack oriented. Right? Here is a huge synth sound called Flea Circus. <laughs> Like total red line. <laughs> and then I did one more that's a BPM split, a little bit of drum action with a kick drum and basses. And then vocoding and another wave razor patch with a drum groove that's kind of halftime speared. Sounds like you've got a radio hit going on and fun stuff. So it's a really cool little synthesizer. It's on sale for its introductory price, all that stuff. Um, there you go. So good stuff. So highly recommended and uh, check it out. Okay, we're gonna kind of do a left turn. We got about half of the live stream left, which is perfect. We're gonna make a song. I haven't done a lot of these, and I, I did years ago, and I wanna do more of these. Let's try to write a song together in the live stream from scratch. <laughs> I don't have anything set up. Um, it's completely blank. Nothing up my sleeves. I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt, right? Um, I wanna point out, for this is gonna be some support for a library that we've released called Planet Pluck. A lot of you have it, so this might give you some ideas and suggestions on, let's see, get rid of that extra audio track. I have two different Unify layers. Planet Pluck is <clears throat> a definitive library of plucks. Pretty, pretty awesome. Made by Frank Neumann up in Germany, out in Germany, somewhere like that. Um, with all of these really, really cool pluck patches, uh, basics as well as complex ones. That's beautiful, I love that. Rusty old piano. He actually sent me photos of some of the instruments that were sampled for this library. The piano, cello, the mandolin, kalimbas. These are the instruments in here. So if you go to, I really love like the ukulele. And there's four velocity layers, so. Just great. So I've been enjoying I love sometimes when I'm just chilling to, to play the down tempo chill kind of stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of show you my take on one way. I mean, I'm starting from scratch. So <laughs> money crackle, these are different crackle noises, which are fun to layer on top of existing other patches. muted, add that to the layer. So let's do that. Let me let me start one more time. So click to start key crackle. And let's open up Guru Sampler. I'm gonna set the sample start a little later. I don't want the whole sample. I just want enough so it's cool attack element. So and to make sure it doesn't click, I'm going to bring this up to like 005. That's the number for uh, getting rid of a DC click from the sample start. Okay. And then let's go back. I like Stray Light Cloud. 
<clears throat> let's right click on this patch and we say load into, I'm gonna just add instrument one. This is a different way of adding an instrument to Unify. Instead of adding it as a Unify plugin, it adds only layer one. As, as you can see, it doesn't say Unify right here. It says Guru Sampler, because it just took that first layer. When it's basic patches, I know just from the library that an X basic is a single patch. Only layer one exists. This way I'm not doubling up on my effects. So I'm gonna go over here and let's add Klimba Cloud to this as well. Add instrument one. And then this click sound, a little bright. I want it to fit in here a little better. So I'm gonna take the filter. random so that way it, the the sample start is playing around a little bit so it's not the same and and that's ready for let's do something like that so we need to get the sequencer up Let's say we want to do about maybe 75 beats per minute. And I played a wrong note in there. Um, right there. Uh, let's see. Oh, these first notes are not there, so quantize to get to. That should be major one. Hello, notes. Oh, let's say turn these off. Quantize off. <laughs> and then move these all a little bit later, and then quantize the 16th notes. And then bring down the string so it breaks it a little bit. And this also can be this one note needs to be up a half a step. And then these notes need to also go to the right note. So I'm gonna have this kind of playing the whole time, but I'm gonna do something fun. I'm gonna go over to EQ, Filter Max, Low Pass Filter. This way I can play with it vibe-wise in the mix. <clears throat> and I wanna assign that to a knob so that I can change it. So let's go over to our knobs, <clears throat> excuse me. And I want to have this filter max, filter cutoff, assigned to this knob. Because right now this knob, it appears, if I go to the link parameters, isn't doing anything. And I want to click right here because I want it to have full range. The clicking here says start at minimum and go to its current value. And I, I don't want that because the current value is really dark. So it says full range. Check this out. If I go down here to master, to effects, filter max to filter frequency, that's the name of the parameter. If you if you open up filter max, that's its name. There it is. And now I can play my sequence. Um, and I have access to this. I'm gonna call this um, overall <clears throat> filter. And what's cool is by doing that, <clears throat> if I go over here, and I, <clears throat> my voice is doing weird stuff. All right. If I go to Unify, um, right here it is in the list of automation controls. So I could select it here. I could say start low. Right 
right there. I want to get back in dark again. Just a little dark, right? So I got I got the vibe. Kind of like setting the mood, right? Now we need to get some drum grooves going. We need to get a bass part going. I'm going to do this with different instrument layers, um, different plugins of Unify. So let's find a bass. No, <laughs> that won't cut it. But let's go to Planet Pluck and let's find something in the bases. See, are there any bases? In the, there might not be any bases in the library. BPM. There are bass. If you type in bass in search, there are bases. Now, this has a MIDI box assigned to it. I'm going to hit the bypass button. Then I'm going to transpose it down an octave and just play it as a bass. You don't, just because something says BPM to it doesn't mean you need to use it as a BPM patch, okay? So let me check the chat really quick. Okay, so let's have a bass patch go. Let's go up here. I'm playing too much. The whole thing with chill is it's minimal. It's like play less. <laughs> so yeah, I played too much actually there. Still playing too much. Super basic, but this will be really cool when we get going. So, the next thing we need to do is let's look at some bait, some drums, and I'm going to show you some fun tricks here I've been playing and experimenting with. Let's go over here, call up Unify. Um, uh, let me see. <clears throat> okay. Let's go to, uh, now this library, Planet Pluck, doesn't have drums. So we're going to go to Chill Guitar. Um, we're going to start actually by calling up a patch and then dragging over the MIDI file to Logic. So call up something here. This is using three different MIDI box patches to do it, but it's the same basic groove, I believe. Well, let's do it this way. Um, maybe this library might be too complex. Well, let's, let's, let's just do it. Let's try it. So if we want, we could use this to start, but it needs the sounds need to be changed a bit. Yeah, play less is, is a as a concept you have to especially if you're trying to get into serious matching of certain genres of music it's less is more in so much music people don't realize and they just stack and stack and stack go back and simplify <laughs> what you got right i'm gonna do this i just want to call it as a drum kit um this is a little too ex exact so let's go i'm gonna i'm gonna call this up and i'm gonna modify this a little bit I'm gonna have this MIDI file play the whole range of this drum kit. And I have it set to mono because it's a huge kick drum. Let's put the polyphonic. Right? Now, to get into the lo-fi range, we need to go over to here to Probably right here in distortion is the chow tape model. You can call up one of the presets here to get you into a certain. 
like lo-fi to get into this, but I need to, I'm gonna shorten the envelope so it's. Right? Now, I want this groove in, I, the reason I simplified this to a single MIDI file is because I'm gonna have Logic play this to start. So let's open up the MIDI box. And if you click on the name of this groove, oh, it's gonna shoot over the whole stack. So let's do this. It's heat waves, so I'm gonna click here and change this to just heat waves. So that way I don't have it being a, if you see stack up here, then look down here at the name of the groove and then select and load just that groove because it's available in the folder. This way I can drag over and this will give me just a single MIDI file, whatever. Um, and now I have that groove. Oh, it messed up my speed, so go back to 75. Right? So this is the start. We got a ways to go. We want to like, let's actually move and hold down option so that we have this MIDI file repeated twice. For this first section, I want it to be far simpler. I don't want so much going on. So let's go over here and say, no kick. No hi-hat. I'm gonna get rid of the clap. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of the snares. Just have the up hi-hat, little shaker. No, 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 I want that. And then I'm going to select these, bring the velocity down so it's softer. Simplify the kick drum a little bit. Now, if we wanted to take this farther, this is where you start splitting into like having different drums do different things. Um, say I want to have a percussion track with this. So we could go over here to another unified layer. I'll show you where I, my favorite percussion is of course in Cloud City. There is 20 some different instruments that are available in BPM percussion grooves and stuff of your other perk. I'm gonna go down to drum kit right here and call it the world percussion kit. And this calls up all the stuff I can use. I'm gonna put a filter, um, let's see, um, EQ filter max. So much of this is lo-fi, so it means taking all the high end off everything. So we have that we could play with and so we could just a little incidental with some delay in it. Just simple stuff like that to get the vibe going the way that you want. Maybe we need a pad in here. I know what we could use. We could go over here. We need to have... Um,
We need one more pluck sound for the lead part. So let's go over here to Planet Ply. For the singles. Let's see. Uh, oh, ukulele. Maybe I want to layer this with something fun, so I'm going to go to Cloud City to the vocal chops. And this time, I'm going to right click and say load as a new Unify layer, because by doing that, it makes it really easy to change this if it doesn't work, because I'm calling up a patch. I don't, I don't, I don't know my, I made these a couple years ago. <laughs> I don't remember them, so. Like, that doesn't work. So you double click this Unify layer and it opens up the browser so I can just go. And let's see here, the second auxiliary bus is our. The other way to play with this is if you get like, I added the effects. I don't want to change patches necessarily. So now I can open Guru Sampler and I could go to the vocal chops and just. Take it down another octave. So. If you have samples like this where it's a little slow at the beginning, move the sample start later. bit of vocal so just playing around experimenting um, now we have something we could add for a little melody And again, this is all about repeating and loops and not trying to do like complex jazz things, which I'm guilty of trying to do all the time. <laughs> and so all sorts of ideas. There's so many sounds to play with. We could. Let's add one more. Because what you want to do, you get your ideas at the beginning. All, all these genres of dance music, what you do is you overload it with ideas. Throw a whole bunch of ideas on the board and then go back and pick and choose when certain ones show up. Maybe something doesn't show up until like towards the end or maybe it's only for the breakdown or the chorus. You gotta kind of have different parts, so. The 
play a little chord part with this, let's say. What was my chord? Now I could cheat by taking the chords that I played at the beginning, but I don't want to do that. I want to have a little bit different voicing. If you'd like use the same chords and copy parts, then it just sounds like a robot playing it. So don't do that. <laughs> I'm gonna have it start a little brighter so I can hear. Now, um, if I wanted to, I could go down here and hit capture because I was recording that even though it wasn't recording. It's one thing I love with these DAWs now, but I, I'll, I'll do it again with that. Um. Oh. So I have uh, that part. And then when you really get going in the song, you need to have a rhythm part. So let's call up something for doing rhythm. Again, I'm throwing all these things at the very beginning and then I'm gonna space them out and have them play in different places, right? Maybe for this one, let's go to the standard library, go for like a BPM synth, something that's doing a rhythm thing. Um, Let's try that just for fun. See if this works. Ah, not quite right. Not quite right. But it's cool. I love rhythm and stuff because it just puts stuff in that's, you know. Again, it's going to be later. Okay, so we have all these elements, right? Um, now let's have this start here. So it's not the beginning. And we'll keep that at the very beginning. So That comes later. We could even have the drums start. I mean, the, the whole fun now is that now that you have these pieces to work with is finding out how to shape it so that it does what you want it to do for um, the song to make it so it's not just a too quick, it doesn't too go too slow. Uh, let's have these three start here. And where's the shaker at? Shaker comes much later. That's like for in the, the second sections of the song. And maybe no drums to start. So many of these are really simple and stuff like that. Um, so we could just mute this to start. Let's see what that's like. You know?
Big chords later, <laughs> not yet. Now we need a transition desperately to get us from the beginning to the second part. And for that, I'm gonna call up Omnisphere and a library from Omnisphere. So let's go over here to, is Omnisphere in the list? Uh, let's go to Sonics, Omnisphere. And I have a couple of libraries. There's one in particular called Boombox that is all about sweeps, transition, things that are timed. So if we go here to user libraries, is it here? Ah, it's not here. Okay. Well, I have some in Beautifully Broken that are really cool too. So let's go to our effects. Um, did I put them as effects? Yeah. So climbing through the wool hole. These are all really, really cool. Um, there. We have climbing and we have falling. So maybe we'll do this. Let's go over to the multi-mode, turn on stack. This is how you get unified or how you get Omnisphere to kind of work like unified. Omnisphere has eight patches. They can all play at once if you want. So go to part two, go to beautifully broken, go over here. And instead of part one was climbing to the top, part two is going to be falling. So let's go down here to the effects and say falling. That's cool. So let's try it. Never know until you try it how it's going to work. Now, to make it be a little bit more appropriate, I'm going to let's do it in Atmosphere. I like doing stuff inside of these plugins. So if you go to multi-mode, go to um, effects, and go to master. This is kind of like that global channel at the end of Unify. And here I can go EQ. Uh, Studio EQ has a high pass filter. If you go over here and go high pass filter. That's what I want. I just don't want all that low. Just high pass filter it. Maybe a bit, a bit less delay. There, that's nice. So you can see the I did stuff. I haven't started the melody yet. This is the melody part. So you see how I get this to work, right? And then the next time through, we're gonna have it a little bit busier. Right there, we need to have these guys come in and I'm gonna have the drum groove copy over here, copy here, go to this drum part and let's strip it down so that it's simplified for this part. So let's go, hello, drums. Uh, maybe just the first kick and no snares until the very fourth snare. So. And I wanna get rid of the claps for the up there. And then let's have this, maybe simplify the hi-hats for the last part. So it's not 16th notes, it's eighth notes. This is why you need to have MIDI data as well as everything else to work with. You get the 
idea. So. And we can have this effect one more time going into that. Got it two measures before. And for this one, I'm going to stop it right there. Hello, where are you at? Uh, if you hit Command T, you're the second half, so that way. So it drops out. Yeah, piano roll is great. Um, now, a lot of you guys might be not aware of this. Let me see if I can go Command, Key Commands. This is, I use this, oh, if I can if I find. Is it using this key? Oh, I cancel, cancel. Play from selection. I just want to point out, if you don't have this assigned and you use Logic, play from selection is like the, the best key command in Logic by far. Because with this, you can select any object in, in Logic and just hit this key command. Even with cycle on, it will let you start playing from that point. Right? Now, I haven't mixed it. <clears throat> I haven't gone through the certain sounds that I want to have a little bit brighter. It sounds I want to have a little bit less slow end. I haven't done any of that. This is just getting the sources from Unify, um, a couple effects from Omnisphere, um, and we have a nice track to start playing with. And we could go back here, hit A for our automation channel. Let's have this start a little bit darker. Have it grow like that. Fun stuff. Get you in the mood. So that was fun. Hope this helped you guys seeing some process and so forth. Um, uh, any questions? We're about to wrap up. Okay. Thank you all. I appreciate your support. Um, we'll talk to you. Uh, well, let's do our shout outs. Let's see if anybody wants to do a shout out from Portland. Thanks for joining. It was fun. Um, Good. Glad it was helpful. Is in logic an arranger tool? I don't know what you mean by arranger tool exactly. Cool. That was helpful. Thank you for joining for this little Saturday live stream. We'll do it again next week. Um, yeah, we're getting close to Black Friday stuff. There's some really cool things I can't talk about. Yeah, Daniela, I don't understand that question. Is in logic an arranger tool? Um, you have these are your pieces that you've created and sequenced and you can drag them around um, but I don't understand that question. Kasaka 
Tomo, good to see you. Good to see you all. All right. Well, take care, and I will see you next week. If you have questions, unify support at pluginguru.com for uh, helping out. If you need to contact us for anything, happy to help. There's also, I should point out, a sale this weekend going on for today and tomorrow. Um, I believe the program, the pro promo code is save 10 bucks. Um, and you save 10 bucks. How's that? Um, at it, for anything. So let me get to the site real quick and let me confirm that. see here I'm trying to get to <laughs> oh my goodness when I need to get something on my website it won't let me get to it it's pretty funny there we go Let's see the dashboard um just yeah just so you know uh yeah you type in save 10 bucks Type this in. I'll, I'll put this in here. Promo code. Uh, good to see Frank. Frank Newman's, Newman's here. Yeah, if you use save 10 bucks, you save 10 bucks on anything at the website for today and Sunday. Cool. Okay, I'm on, on my way out. So I'll see you guys next week. Thanks again for joining, and uh, have a great week, okay? Thank you all.